Hi, I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, and welcome to the Mayor's Roundtable, an intelligent conversation around a semi-round table bringing you, the citizens of Berkeley Heights, the information you want, need, and deserve to hear from your mayor, Robert Woodruff. Mayor. Doc. Nice to see you tonight. A pleasure. As always, pleasure. Yep. we made it through another year. It's uh, Christmas times, holiday time. Great, great time of the season for, uh, for everyone. Yeah, and, right. and we kicked it off at the Winter Walk. Which was tremendous. Wasn't it? Oh. It was fabulous. Uh, you know, wow. thousands of people, great weather, yep. and the reaction from the people yes. I thought was really, really great. Yes, and again, uh, kudos to our volunteers. Oh. They just do a phenomenal job, the businesses and uh, and uh, you know various individuals, obviously within the government, our DPW, our police, our fire, yeah. our, our yeah. emergency workers, everybody the chips in. It's department, a great department. Everybody the rotary, chips. The uh, Boy Scouts. I mean, it was yep. the fire, the rescue. I mean, every volunteer organization was there. Yes, it was. Uh, all the municipal offices were represented in one way or another. It was really, and then the business and the people got together. It, it was great for Berkeley Heights, and we're looking forward to next year. Yeah, I heard somebody from uh, Ireland came. Yes, that's right. And what I actually uh, met some girls that came from uh, Salt Lake City. Wow. Well, so uh, you were all over the place that night. And oh, it's my job, man. That is, that you is. Know, yeah. Yep, you are. It's there to help, you know, but it, the communications committee is all about our Be Heard campaign. Yeah, we that, want, we want the citizens to be heard. We want them to be, you to be heard to them. That's what all this is about. Correct. It's about getting the information out, timely basis and transparency, but also yeah. communication. So. Well, and, 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 and along those lines, Doc, I just want to advise everybody that our communication committee met this few days yeah. ago in the public. And uh, unfortunately, there weren't a lot of people there. And many that were there were individuals that probably were very familiar with what we've been doing in town, but uh, again, this is a communications committee. They're all volunteers. They conducted a uh, survey, came up with some very in intensive and extensive results, and uh, they're going to be—they're made available, obviously, to everybody in town. But we hope to take those results and and just be better at getting our information out. Yeah, and we had a 30% response rate, approximately well, relative to the number of uh, uh, homes in town. So that was—that's a pretty solid response. Yes, rate. it is. Yes, it is. Now let's get some information out. Okay. I hear there's some um, uh, close to getting some uh, shovels in the ground over at what was the old Berkeley florist across from Hall's Garden Center, and that's also related to Vito's property. That, that's correct. So that's I, a double-edged question. So what's going to be happening over at uh, the Berkeley florist uh, property? Okay. Well, today uh, our representatives, uh, one of whom, in fact, will be here shortly. Uh, closed the deal with Elite Properties, who was the developer, and that developer uh, has control of the old Berkeley Flores property. Okay. And they're also extremely interested in what we all know as Vito's property. Mm -hmm. That property on Springfield Avenue was priority to them, and, um, and that closed. And that was also part of, uh, and they were subsumed within what is our memorandum of understanding with respect okay. to the affordable housing obligations. So, that's a great thing, and I want to thank all those involved in getting that done today. So that should enable that group, Elite Properties, now yeah. to, to focus on uh, Vito Mondelli's property. And uh, nice. hopefully that will move more quickly. So there's ink on the paper then correct. Uh, uh, from uh, over by the Berkeley Florist. That, that's Excellent. correct. And in, in, in line with the idea of getting shovels in the ground, um, we hope tomorrow, but by no later than Monday or Tuesday, to get our request for proposals, and qualifications, et cetera, out uh, to potential bidders uh, to put up our brand new municipal building. Great. Okay. Um, we, we hope to get an idea that, uh, as to costs and things, mm -hmm. and we've been spending a lot of time with, with individuals who uh, have that sp particular expertise, and, and they're drilling down on some things because okay, we've, we've indicated to the public that it's going to cost a certain amount, and that's where we're going to come. I wonder about that amount. Excellent. So um, hopefully what that will generate is a sufficient number of bidders because the more bidders, the, the better it is for us. Sure. It's, an, it's, it's a development project, which means we do not have to take the lowest bid. So okay. that inures to our benefit. Mm. Um, so you're going to get, we, we think we're going to get some quality groups coming forward mm. here. And uh, we're looking forward to it. And uh, that would include, obviously, there's various phases, as we've spoken of before. But one of those phases, obviously, is the salt dome. Yeah. And it begins with the salt dome. So they're really going to come back to us with, with bids from soup to nuts mm -hmm. as in, in dealing with the entire project all the way down to the parking, nice. uh, with, the, with the new parking lot, which eventually probably will be the last stage mm -hmm. once, once the new building gets built and this particular building gets raised. So 
that's also good news, and we hope probably sometime nice. in mid-January to have some some feedback from them. And okay. and um, we'll, 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 the anticipation is we would trim down a number to a lesser number, and then you know drill down on that group mm -hmm. and see see what we can do to to best effectuate what's best for us. Got it. So All we're right. looking forward to that. And again, nice. next year is going to be a big year. All right. So uh, any other. Um, properties uh, with the redevelopment um, having any action with the construction uh, at this point? Not, nothing, uh, you know, with, quote, the shovel in the ground, close quote, yeah. but uh, we expect um, two or three of these properties uh, to come before the planning board sometime soon. Right. Uh, we would hope they would, uh, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, there, there has been more done in the Locust Street property with respect to, the, that's the 55 and older. Exactly. They've raised the property. Okay, Great. so, and, and they have done so in accordance with what our requirements were uh, in doing it in an order, however you destroy a building in an orderly fashion, mm -hmm. uh, but that's pretty much what they have done. Excellent. So, again, all of, these, all of these projects which have been the subject of a lot of work by our professionals as well as members of our council um, and our business administrator and everyone involved are really coming to fruition. Nice. Uh, almost at the same time. Good, so, good. Okay. Now, um, speaking of that, the um, council is going to have some new, well, two new inaugurals, people, uh, well, one, new members, I Correct. don't have to say. Well, they had elections, and they right. got to be installed, right. is what I'm saying. Okay. So installation is going to be when for the two uh, uh, recently elected well, uh, members uh, of the committee? Well, that's commonly known as the reorg. Uh, normally, Berkeley Heights has Thank had the reorg. Oh, you're welcome. Normally, Berkeley Heights has had the reorg on January 1, and uh, the council's been, myself, have been thinking about this for a few years. We spoke about it earlier this year. Uh, it can be extremely inconvenient to families and, and as well as individuals to, to you know, hop right into the middle of a January 1 day yeah. where everyone is kind of relaxing and, mm -hmm. uh, and it is, it is uh, really, um, it, it's very, it's formal, okay, there's, mm -hmm. there's really not, it's formal insofar as individuals are sworn in, but there's, there's no really substantive things being done on that day. So we are going to do it on the first scheduled meeting and uh, the two individuals would be Gene Kingsley, mm -hmm. who was reelected, and Susan Polk, uh, both of whom will be sworn in on that day and will uh, commence their duties obviously immediately. Excellent, excellent. So that's okay. one thing people can put on their, on, on, on their calendars looking right. forward. Right. So um, busy year yep. coming up. Um, we had a, a lot going on last year. Uh, where do you think the emphasis of the town needs to go over the next 12 months? Well, um, it's really a combination of the redevelopment which we're facing and also we are facing the need to draft and recognize a new master plan. Mm. Um, and, and that is something that statutorily every town is required to do within a certain period of time. Um, yeah, we took public comments on the master plan. That, uh, that's uh, correct. It the late summer, early fall, something that's like that. That's correct. And that continues and I want the public to know that they're certainly entitled to, to come forward down to the downtown and, and there will be documents for them to review. And, um, and that leads, kind of segues into who our guest is tonight. Our, our guest is Mike Mistretta of the Harbor Consultants. Mike is the, uh, the town planner, and Mike has been an integral component of, uh, of the redevelopment, which we're in the middle of, as well as the affordable housing circumstance, which uh, well, we are- dovetail together. Th they, are, they really are, and Michael will probably you know, comment upon that a little bit. But um, you know, most people understand there is a planning board, and most people understand there is a zoning board but they don't necessarily understand um, you know, what the statutes require them to do. And essentially, the master plan talks about what will this town look like within the next 10 to 15 to 20 years? Where are we going? Uh, are we any different than any other small towns? Or are we unique in some aspects? Of course we are. We have fireworks. We have fireworks. It's Berkeley Heights and we have fireworks. So, yeah, we have fireworks. So, so Michael will talk about that. Um, and he has progressed, uh, you know, to or towards the final plan. Um, we're, not, we're not there yet, but we're close to being there. Excellent. So I think the town, the citizens need to know, okay, this is where we're going and this is why we're going and this is the best way to get the there. The vision. The vision, right. There has mm -hmm. to be a vision. Yes. And, and um, you know, everyone, I think, recognizes that the, the era of the old small town, okay, has really passed us by um, mm -hmm. and, and probably has done so quite a while ago. And the idea is, okay, who's going to be prepared to move forward? 
What do we have to do to make changes perhaps in our own ordinances mm -hmm. uh, to make ourselves okay. more competitive with other towns? I know, I know the, a, lot of the small a lot of the towns and small towns in particular are, are intending to deal with, with Trenton with respect to various issues on, on liquor licenses, which okay. may help restaurants, which may help downtowns. So there's a lot of things that a lot of, a lot of the issues and concerns we have are shared by other towns. Mm -hmm. So, and Michael has, and his group deal with a lot of other towns, so he can certainly speak to that as great, well. Great, great. Well, it sounds like that's gonna be a, a lot of good information mm -hmm. to get uh, out to the citizens tonight. Okay. Um, so uh, why don't we take a short break. Sounds and good. And when we come back, we'll be back with uh, um, Michael Mastretta. Okay. And we'll go over the master plan. Ooh, sounds devious. Well, we'll find out. Okay. okay. We'll be right back for the Mayor's Roundtable. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio with the Mayor, Robert Woodrow. I fell and I can't get up. Elizabeth, here I'm coming. I, 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 I need the emergency squad. Yeah, it really does happen. And at those times, what do you do? You can't get to the phone or you need emergency intervention. Well, you use Medic Alert. But what if you don't have one? If you live in Berkeley Heights or live in New Providence, all you got to do is call the Rotary Club. Jim Rimtall of the Berkeley Heights Rotary Club, tell us a little bit about that. Dr. Don, what, we, what I have here is a, uh, the medic alert device. It's called the Guardian Alert 911. And this device is sold. We, we, we administer this and sell this for, 70, for $90 for the year, which includes the first year installation and the maintenance of it. And then annually, it's $70 per year after that. Uh, it, the device is very simple to use. I'm using the lanyard here so you can wear it around your neck if you're around the house. If you'd like to sh uh, clip it to a, a purse or, or perhaps your, your belt, you can also sheath it. So there's two ways of developing that. And it goes into a rechargeable battery uh, system that you can place in the house. And typically you charge it in the evening uh, when, you're, when you're not using it. And that way you have it for the, for the foreseeable future on a daily basis. Used for people of, of all ages. Mm -hmm. Now, Jim, that's about a 10% of the cost that my father paid for his medical alert system. Uh, how does the Rotary make that happen? Well, quite frankly, it, it's, a, it's a service to the community. It's a small cost. It basically covers our cost. And our, our member, uh, Mike Del Duca, is the person who administers this, this for us for the entire year. So he goes around, he has a schedule, and he sees everyone on a monthly basis. He has a schedule set up. It's all matrixed out, and it's very easy to do, and he, he spends his own time doing it. How would somebody get some information about getting a medical alert for themselves or for a family member who lives in Berkeley Heights, New Providence? There's several ways of doing it. You can either contact uh, Mike Del Duca at Berkshire Hathaway in New Providence. He is the, uh, he's our member who handles that. You can contact me, GRA Ar Architects locally here in town, or you can go on our website, uh, berkeleyheightsrotaryclub.com, and you can get it from that location as well. There you go. Be safe. Get a medic alert. Contact the Rotary. Jim Ramenthal, thank you very much for your time. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Doc. Drug awareness is more than just knowing about marijuana or cocaine or heroin. There are so many what's called boutique drugs today, and they keep coming out, and it's a real problem. The Community Policing Department in Berkeley Heights can help you become aware of what's out there. Sergeant Massimino, Community Policing Officer, how can people become more informed about the drug crisis in Berkeley Heights? Uh, the Berkeley Heights Police Department uh, presents... Uh, as many times as we can during the year, a drug awareness seminar. And basically, we're just informing the residents on the drug trends within the town and the neighboring towns. Is that for kids? Is it for adults? Is it for my four-year-old? I mean, who's it geared for? Uh, as you know, drugs don't discriminate. It's for all ages. Uh, obviously, we put an emphasis on teenagers because, obviously, that's our focus, but also for adults. Mm -hmm. Is it about just awareness of what's out there, or is it signs of use and abuse? Uh, we cover everything from uh, signs and symptoms of a user to full full blown addiction. If there's a group of people that want to have you come down and talk to them, a service club or uh, something like that, would you do it for a, a large group as well? That's correct. Yeah, we've 
we presented to um, the residents at Town Hall um, through you know our partnership with the schools, obviously, and uh, we have one in November scheduled for the PTO. So if you have a, a large group in town, obviously we'll come and present. Become informed, be safe, contact the Community Policing Department. I'm Dr. Donald Fabio for Sergeant Massimino. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, sir. Welcome back to the show, and now we're going to go into the second part, which is going to talk about our master plan, but it's about where we're going to develop the town in the future. And uh, Michael Mestreta, our town planner from Harbor Consultants, thank you very much for coming to be with us tonight. Thank We've you. We've got a bunch of questions for you. Sure. But you've been our master planner for about 14 years now, correct? That's correct. So guess what? If you don't like what's going on in the plan, it's his <laughs> fault, okay? So if anybody wants to, you know, yell at anybody, we're going to yell at you, okay? That's fine. Now you're going to set okay, us up good. for another 20 years, <laughs> so you're really on everybody's short stick. Right. Now, Michael, I'm having some fun with you. Thank sure. you for being on, on, on track. Um, you know, Mayor, this is a huge thing. It is. What do the residents need to know about the master plan? Well, I think it's almost elementary, at least a simple question is, Michael, what is a master plan and why are we required to have one? Well, it's a statutory requirement under the municipal land use law that every town has a master plan. Um, commonly, most people are familiar with what's called a land use plan element and the housing plan element. And I'll go through each one of those. Those are the two main portions of the master plan. And I want to be clear, I know you, people here that were working on a master plan, but this is a document that has many different elements. And right now our housing plan element has, all, has already been approved and is on file with the clerk's office and with the planning board uh, office. Um, so everybody has, as I'm walking through this today, the housing plan element is dated March 1st, 2007, adopted by our planning 17. board. I'm um, 2017, right. I apologize. Right. And then it was amended July 31st, 2017. So as I go through this, all of the details on all of the different redevelopment projects, housing projects, everything everybody's been hearing about all these COA uh, inclusionary projects, it's all documented in what's called our housing plan element and it's on file today, and it has been on file since March 1st of this year. So a, as I go through the projects, if anybody wants any greater detail, how many bedrooms, how many parking spaces, elevations, what are the amenities gonna look like? What do the individual building elevations are, you know, look like for each one of these projects? It's all wrapped within our housing plan element. Okay. And that's located where for the citizens? It's on file with the planning board. We've okay. also put it on file with the clerk. Just to be clear, a master plan is a planning board document. It's adopted by the planning board. It's guided by the planning board. And uh, it's on file with the planning board secretary. We also have it on file with the township clerk, just in case somebody were to go over to that office and want to look at it also. Great. Mike, um, specifically, what areas of Berkeley Heights are considered downtown for purposes of our development? Our, our downtown, and you'll see a board presented tonight, the downtown generally consists of three zones. Our going west to east uh, along Springfield Avenue, it's the HB3 zone, the DD zone, the downtown development district, and then the HB2 zone, housing business two. Collectively, those three zones comprise our downtown. Okay, now, if, if one was to have, obviously have knowledge of the town, specifically Springfield Avenue, where would that begin from a standpoint of a landmark? Um, earlier tonight, Mayor, you, you spoke about the elite property, which the Berkeley uh, Floors property, which we've entered into an agreement with. Um, on the northern side of Springfield Avenue, that is the corner, that is the beginning, the gateway, if you will, of the downtown as you enter our township. So it, it starts there. And if I fast forward across our town, if you were to go all the way down to the Primrose School on our eastern edge of our town, that would conclude, that would end our downtown technically. Okay, does the master plan encompass the entire uh, boundaries of the town or are there specific areas that are of greater concern? Well, the master plans, re you're required to look at the overall town. Um, one of the exhibits that you'll see tonight is what's called an updated zone map. Um, right now it's amended October 2017. That shows 
the comprehensive boundaries of our town and every one of the individual zones of our town. And it's broken down, it's color coded, um, and it also shows the redevelopment areas on that map. But when you look at our zone map, and as we learned when we went through the whole um, affordable housing program, our town is predominantly built out and there, we have very little vacant land left. So the master plan, instead of focusing on large areas of our town that are all built out and so forth, we have really concentrated our analysis as a, uh, a piggyback, if you will, of what we started in 2007, which was the revitalization and the redevelopment of our downtown. Essentially, that's where all of the building, for the most part, is being concentrated. So with all these new units and so forth, we focused on what I said earlier, our downtown, the HB2, HB3, and our DD zone. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, we've, we've had some volunteer groups uh, pop up in the last few years who have, uh, for example, I, I think specifically of the Downtown Beautification mm -hmm. Committee. All right. Um, what can they contribute or uh, assist you as a group, as well as other groups can assist sure, you also? Sure. But in particular, what has the Downtown Beautification Committee contributed to this? Um, what we've asked them to do is, as these new projects are coming online in our, not, not just in our downtown, but throughout, but I'm going to concentrate on our downtown, um, the look, the scale, the mass, the architectural features. Um, we're looking at, through the inclusion of these projects, well, there's going to be a significant amount of new residents that we have coming in, generally concentrated, again, in our downtown, next to our new municipal complex, uh, our train station, and these new residential projects, which some are uh, a mixed use. They in include retail or amenities on the first floor with the apartments above it. Um, what is very, what, what the Beautification Committee and, and the Environmental Commission and a lot of other groups could help us with is coming up with guidelines. Um, what do we need to do as a town to prepare for the new projects that are coming in? I spoke of first about the housing plan element. That, that gives you all the detail you ever want to know about every project that's going to be, that is proposed in our town at this time. The land use plan element, which is the, the section of the element of the master plan that we are concentrating on now, takes it to another level and it says, it's, it's supposed to answer the question, okay, your housing plan element says all of these projects are going to be constructed primarily in your downtown, now what? What should we prepare for? Streetscape, safer uh, uh, walkways to schools? Um, <laughs> do we need more open space? Uh, I can go on and on. That's, those are really the details, public open spaces and so forth. What do we need to do as a town to prepare for this onslaught of these new projects? Let's say, for example, uh, and, and I think this through, obviously, as, a, as an elected official and, uh, and a steward of, of the people's money, Obviously, um, you're going to have this kind of change with, with an influx of more people or, or a, as you have described, it obviously impacts services. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. So, so you've got your fire, you've got your police, you've got your emergency. Um, uh, do you seek their input with respect to this? Absolutely. Earlier this year, we sent out a letter. Um, I don't have the exact number, but it, I went, the, a letter uh, was written by myself and it was sent out to over 25 different groups uh, township wide, from individual uh, department heads to commissions, departments including the police, fire, environmental commission, the school district, uh, beautification committee, and, and so forth. Um, a comprehensive list of all of uh, the agencies and department heads and groups that we sent it to is wrapped within the uh, land use plan of the master plan. We received very good comments back from all of these groups. And then we took it to another level. We had a series of department head meetings where we sat down with the township engineer, the zoning officer, and so forth. And we really pulled in a lot of a lot more comments uh, into the master plan. So it's a lot of community feedback, department head feedback, and uh, we're really just trying to get the best uh, uh, comments back from everybody and what we can do to write the best plan. Okay. Now, um, are you comfortable? Uh, insofar as, let's face it, you're, you're the leader here, you are our town planner, uh, you're going to, to, to gui guide us, give us your, your instruction mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Um, are you comfortable that 
that all of those people specific that you've mentioned going out and getting their opinion and thoughts and so forth uh, are, are going to contribute to this town moving forward? Absolutely. They already have. It's a great group. Uh, the beautiful thing about working in Berkeley Heights is the community input and, and, and how engaged everybody is. Um, I'm hearing stories about the turnout on the Winterfest, uh, Winterfest and it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, it all speaks to the interest that the public has in our town and you only get a better prod, uh, product at the end of the day when you have that many people involved giving their opinions, coming to meetings. Um, I've given out my email address, my contact information in every uh, document. Um, I've had excellent feedback and it, it, at the end of the day you get a much better product in a document. The last thing that we want to do as planners is write a document it's approved in a few minutes at a planning board meeting that you know nobody really comments on and then you put it on a shelf for 10 years and nobody really looks at it. 10 years goes by, you blow off the dust and you refresh it and you roll it out again. Um, that's not what we want to do. Um, what I'm very excited about is when I wrote the master plan back in 2007, um, long before any redevelopment of the municipal complex was envisioned or I've ever had a conversation with anybody about it, I spoke of in that document, or we spoke of as a group who put it together, was a redevelopment of our, of our municipal complex and preparing for new development in our downtown. And we went through a pro, uh, lot by lot analysis of every property in our downtown. It's called the Strategic Revitalization Plan. Um, I did not come up with that. Mm -hmm. but, um, and, it out, and we surveyed every single property in our downtown and we said we really have to do something about these properties that are aging that are uh, in order to bring some life back into our downtown. It was the number one issue that I've heard as your planner over the years saying what can we do to you know raise the bar if you will and redevelop and, and revitalize our downtown. Now you fast forward two thousand, uh, uh, 10 years later and in my position it's very exciting um, I've presented a board that you'll see tonight during this uh, uh, presentation, which outlines a series of uh, projects, mostly concentrated in our downtown, where you're going to soon see a lot of construction and a lot of this come into life. So writing about it 10 years ago and now having it all you know, come together now, it, it's a very exciting. Well, Michael, I'm going to bring up a topic which uh, I, I think, and I've had this discussion with mayors of other towns, um, there have been the traditional approaches, particularly as, as uh, set forth by, by your planning boards, uh, with parking. Mm -hmm. And um, I've become an advocate of if you don't have, uh, you know, if you don't have a traffic issue, you don't have a downtown. Right. Okay. And um, uh, the, the concept that a certain amount of square feet requires a certain amount of parking, um, I'm not so sure that's not an antiquated concept, and I'm not so sure that we really have, don't have to look at the entire town and all the available parking spaces that are available within a certain confine uh, uh, so that maybe our restaurants can expand. Uh, we can bring more restaurants in, and they're not going to be uh, inhibited, so to speak, uh, by the parking situation. Give us some thoughts on that. Sure. Uh, great question. Three major issues. Um, the series of projects that have all been approved in our downtown have all been held to the standard of having two parking spaces per dwelling unit plus one per 300 for the retail space that's on the first floor. So I'm very confident with those standards built into these projects that the new projects are not going to create or, or exacerbate our parking problem. That's very important because when we started this program, uh, a lot of the developments were proposing 1.0 or something, you know, a very low parking ratio. We've, we held to the 2.0 plus one per 300 for the retail space. So the new projects, in my opinion, will not create, uh, will not exacerbate the parking problem. Number two, we have, I keep talking about the downtown. What we've done is we went out and we surveyed the entire downtown and we have a parking study wrapped into the master plan that identifies how many parking spaces we have, where they're available, um, uh, if there's any parking restrictions on them and so forth. So before we start proposing any new parking, we want to understand where our parking is locating, located today, how it is restricted, if anything, with signage and so forth, and how we can better utilize it. And then the third prong is as this property, the municipal complex is redeveloped, we're uh, redeveloped and completed, we're expanding our commuter parking 
on here on this property on the eastern portion of the of the property so we're going to have additional surface commuter parking here which is also a prime opportunity to use this parking uh, you know not just for commuters during the day but also for the public at night and that's something that we've been looking at um, a lot of my municipalities the last thing we want to do is start building a lot of excess surface parking lot we want to be really smart with what we have and make sure that we're utilizing it and it's available for the business owners and the restaurant owners when they're need uh, when they need it most uh, Michael um the, the, the master plan, uh, you obviously spoke uh, you know, with, with respect to the land use and the housing mm -hmm. uh, as the two really focal points. Um, what, what kind of elements do you, do you look at? They may not be required elements, let's say, but they're elements that may be unique to this town or, 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 or any town. Sure. Uh, for example, I think in terms of uh, you know, the recreation. Sure. Okay? Now that's obviously a town, why that's not an immediately downtown issue. But it's extremely important to, to everyone in town. And, Absolutely. And particularly those with young kids. Sure. Uh, how, do you, how do you incorporate the recreation and, uh, you know, and, and, and the land use respect to that? Uh, one of the slides that you'll see in the presentation this evening is a, um, a map that identifies all of the open space that we have in town. And what we're trying to do is we mapped all of the schools, all of the open space that we have in town. We also mapped all of the right-of-ways and all of the most of the easements in town and then we catalog them whether they're municipal county or state right of ways and what we're trying to do on this exhibit is okay we have these new units coming into the town and now how, where do they locate uh, how are they located in comparison to our schools or our public open spaces and our fields and so forth and how do we connect these properties what's the one of the best ways to connect them and if we put together what I believe is a really strong master plan. This document should be able to, we should be able to use this as a, by the town, many different ways. We should be able to use the same document over and over and apply for grants with the county and with the state, safe streets, the school grants and so forth to show that we're, how, how, that we're out in front of this issue and we're trying to connect our residents to our open space, our fields and our schools. In addition, there's recommendations for even acquiring some uh, properties um, even even in our downtown I, I know there's some there's in our downtown we have some very small undersized pieces of property that if they become available in my opinion the town should take advantage and, and take an opportunity looking at acquiring those properties because now we can start creating some small pocket pocket parks and so forth and it just keep building upon this layering of our you know, redevelopment of our downtown. Uh, Michael, if you could, uh, I, I know of a particular example of this, uh, and I know you and I have spoken about this. Uh, you have Peppertown Park, mm -hmm. which is open space. Uh, tell us how you've kind of incorporated Peppertown Park with the redevelopment of Kings and how there's a connection there and how you think that fits the master plan. Absolutely. Um, when, uh, when we did the redevelopment of the Kings project, one of the requirements was that the developer of the Kings project is going to reconstruct the streetscape starting at Lone Pine Drive to the east all the way out to Plainfield Avenue um, extending right in front of Peppertown Park and that developer is required to do the northern portion of the right-of-way so right outside our building here we're going to start new streetscapes starting from Plainfield all the way to Lone Pine and what we're trying to do is connect the people who are going to be living in this new project that it's now known as Station, uh, uh, Station Court, uh, I'm sorry, Stratton House, I'm sorry, I apologize. Stratton House, along with the movie theater redevelopment and then other projects in that general area. Um, and the thought here is that Sherman Avenue becomes a second main street. Everybody's aware of uh, Springfield Avenue, high traffic, that's where all the vehicles are and that's, you know, it's a heavily traveled road, a county roadway. What we're trying to do now is through this redevelopment process and the master plan requirements is connect our shopping centers to our new municipal complex and our train station and ha give, the, give the residents of our town a nice safe, quote unquote, I call it a second main street where it's more comfortable, it's pedestrian scale, um, we're going to have all of the design uh, standards, the ornamental lights, street trees and so forth, benches, and it'll it's going to extend to Peppertown Park and then in our slide I'll show you in a minute um, 
is going to be we're proposing a redevelopment of Peppertown Park uh, for the residents of our community. So, so excuse me, Michael, the street you're talking about, you said it was pedestrian scale. Does that mean no cars or does that mean no. designed in such a way it's for walking in cars? What does no. that term mean? What we're trying to do is design it with uh, our decorative brick pavers on both sides with ornamental lights, with benches. So there will be street. cars going There will on. be cars on there, but at a pedestrian... Do you have a picture of this, you said? Yes, I do. It'll be shown uh, in tonight's presentation as I, as I walk through it, and I'll, I'll stop at that one exhibit. The idea is, you know, if you're out walking your dog or going for a jog or so forth, we want it to be a lot, you know, we want to steer people to Sherman Avenue. And it's going to be a very exciting redevelopment area uh, that's going to connect those projects. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Michael, it's, uh, it's apparent, and like, I've, I've been working closely with you for the few years that I've been an elected official. I know Mr. Pasicolo, who's sitting here tonight, and many others have, and, and we all know how enthused you are really about where this town is going. Uh, the affordable housing issue and our redevelopment kind of merged at the same time, which was fortuitous <laughs> in a way. Yeah, what, it, what, what we did was the, the strategy that we came up with was, okay, we have this number. It's being forced upon us by the courts. Um, we first, we negotiated the greatest number that we could uh, possible. I'm very proud of that, that uh, settlement, that number that we came up with. But then we took it, says, all right, this is the number, and we agreed to that number. How do we best use this as an opportunity, not to run away from affordable housing, but let's use affordable housing and what's required by the courts as a, as a tool to you know, continue this redevelopment. Um, and so that's why we turned around and tried to concentrate the units in the downtown. Uh, as everybody knows in our community, the, the former King Shopping Center is really one of the heart of the, the properties that are, are the heart of our downtown. And it's been closed for a you know a long, long time. Long. Every time I I'm here, uh, a lot of people don't even remember Kings was there. You know, <laughs> it, 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 the last thing That's you want to see anybody who lives in this town, the last thing you want to see is you know vacant, abandoned, very right. large structures in the heart of your downtown. And then right next to it, we've got uh, the movie theater property again, another abandoned property in our downtown. Um, earlier this evening, you talked about the elite re, uh, redevelopment of the Berkeley Forest property, another piece of property that's been vacant in our downtown. What we've tried to do this, through this process is, okay, we have this number. We have to accept this number of units. Let's, let's make the best of it. Let's use it as a tool. Let's concentrate these units in our downtown, but also manage the scale of the projects, which is very important. These projects all meet our downtown requirements of a maximum of 36 feet in height, except for the Kings we allowed to go to 42 because it's sunken down mm -hmm. a little bit lower. Um, we've required all of them to have the minimum parking. We've had very high-end architecture meeting our design standards. Yep. So I'm very pleased with the architectural elevations that have come out of those. And they're also including public plazas and public open spaces built into their projects. If you take a look at the development of the movie theater project, for an example. I spoke earlier about the improvements along Sherman Avenue and making that a second Main Street. Well, the rear of the new movie theater redevelopment project includes a 4,000 square foot retail space that opens up to a public plaza area where you have tables and chairs and people sitting outside um, and adding to the vibrancy of our downtown. And then also with the Berkeley uh, Flores property, the elite property, there is a tiered public plaza along Springfield Avenue that wow. feeds off of the retail space. Um, again, so it's not just cramming apartments into your downtown. We're creating mixed use developments, high end architectural design with public spaces, with the streetscape improvements, and holding the minimum. Uh, parking requirements that we have. So this is an example of using redevelopment as a tool and, and combining it with requirements of the court and in order to facilitate the redevelopment of our downtown. Okay. Well, Doc, I have one last question for Michael. And we know Michael's a town planner. He's not a fortune teller. Michael, if, if you were asked in your professional capacity, okay, it's 2017. Where's Berkeley Heights? What's Berkeley Heights going to look like in 2025, 2030, based upon what you currently know and hope 
to see. Well, my, my hope is all the work that we have done over the last three to four years um, that you will see these new projects fully constructed and, and all these streetscape improvements, everything that I've been talking about fully built out over the next few years. Um, I want to caution everybody, we're, as far as the township end is concerned, we're responsible for putting the zoning in place and signing all these agreements, right. these redevelopment agreements, settlement agreements, adopting uh, the land use plan of the element and so forth, but we're not, we don't build, um, we're, we don't control the timing of any of these projects except for this one here, because right. this is our project, our, a redevelopment of our town hall. So. Um, Everybody could see how long it's taken to get this project a shovel in the ground and getting it ready. Well, all of these developers are going through the same process on their own, and they're, you know, uh, we have a very strong market right now, and the economy is very strong. So I hope that would lend to a quicker uh, progress uh, progress of these developments. But we can't control the, you know, when these projects sure. are started. You're right. Well, Doc, I think we. There was oh, a lot of information. Yeah. You know, yeah, it might hold information. Could, could you just summarize real quick walking down sure uh the springfield avenue on your on your uh, master plan there just explained everybody it is let's go uh uh west to east how's that sound sure and thank just you. and just kind of walk through it so people can understand bvhf one more time and and i think we can wrap it up sure thank you um what you'll see tonight is uh, a presentation a little powerpoint that we put together uh, i know people you know, it, visually, it's a lot easier to understand everything that I'm talking about. So you'll see a, a series of slides. Um, the presentation's entitled 3D Downtown Study, Land Use Plan Element of the Master Plan Draft. It's not 100% complete. Uh, it's dated December 14, 2017. The first slide just gives you an idea of where in town is this located, is our downtown located, and, and this study. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we go through, um, the next slide is just an index that orientates you, um, gives you match lines A, B, through H as you go um, west to and east. And those are the zones that you mentioned, correct? That's correct. Now a DD stands for what, and it's located where? It's a, it, our downtown development zone, and it's in the heart of our downtown. That's where the uh, former King Shopping Center is. That's where our Berkeley Heights uh, Shopping Center is right now. The movie theater project, Lone Pine Drive, that's Better. really the heart of our downtown. And then it's flanked by the HB3 zone district to the west and the HB2, they stand for Housing Business 2, Housing Business 3. The intent okay. there is to bring, uh, maintain mm -hmm. retail and services on the first floor with apartments above um, generally speaking, in those two zones. So we're basically going from, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. if you're standing in the Primrose School and you walk outside and you make a left and walk down Springfield, we're going from there all the way down, probably a half a block or so short of uh, short of Mount Carmel. That's correct. Correct, and uh, on both sides. And um, so that's that's kind of so. Anyone watching this, the next time you drive downtown. In your mind's eye, you, you've got it, okay, it. right? And if you need more, you come in here and get the information that Mike has talked about. But this, this, isn't, this is actually, you know, a summary of where we've been and a right. summary of where we're going, mm -hmm. okay? So this is, I think, timely and, uh, uh, you know, we're excited. And you can tell that Michael, Michael is, and uh, this is going to be a great thing for this town. And uh, uh, we'll be talking about it off in the coming year, Doc. Sounds like a plan. Well, Michael, again, thanks for your uh, information. Great stuff. Um, were you the guy behind the uh, clock tower and the uh, town square that never happened? <laughs> uh, well, the clock, no, I'm the only clock kidding. tower went in. Right? kidding. Yeah. But seriously, uh, we are going to hear next month is going to be the township community president's going to be our guest. Council correct? president. Council correct. president's coming to find out the plan of what the council's gonna be doing for the next year, so that's the next meeting. And the library right now is moving. Yes. So the old library is not physically open, and the books are being put in storage or being shipped to the new library, which is the Little File Rectory. Hopefully by next meeting, the library will be back open again. So it's just moving. And uh, that's, that's a wrap. That's it, okay? Doc. Mayor, thank you very much. Michael, thank you very Merry much. Merry Christmas you. and thank you. And Merry thank Christmas you. to everybody out there, right, Doc? Merry Christmas right back at you. For the Mayor's Roundtable, Mayor Robert Woodruff and Michael Mestretto, I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks for tuning in.